Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Easy Learn AI. In this video, I would like to introduce you to cross entropy loss function. Cross entropy loss function is an important loss function frequently used in many deep learning models, especially in classification problems. In today's video, we will take a detailed and step by step look at the principles of this cross entropy loss function. Let's get started right away. The formula for cross entropy looks like this. It's hard to understand what this formula means just by looking at it. So, to understand cross entropy, information, expectation value, and entropy. We first need to look at three things. Let's start by exploring what information is. To understand information, we will start with a familiar concept, probability. You are probably familiar with probability. For example, the probability of getting heads when flipping a coin is one second, or the probability of rolling a one on a die is one sixth. Probability is the frequency of occurrence of an event in all possible situations. Let's consider this scenario. For example, imagine making 100 raffle tickets, 99 of which are blank, and one is a winning ticket. Place these tickets in a box and draw them one by one. You will keep drawing blue tickets. Blue ticket again this time, another blue ticket this time, and even if you draw one more time, obviously a blue ticket will come out, and you wouldn't be surprised even if another blue ticket comes out, because the probability of drawing a blue ticket is 0 0.99, which is high, so it's not surprising that blue tickets continue to appear. But if suddenly a red ticket comes out, everyone will be surprised. Because the probability of a red ticket is only 0 0.01, which is low. That means the higher the probability, the less surprising it is when the event occurs. And the lower the probability, the more surprising it is when the event occurs. In other words, probability and surprise are inversely related concepts. Therefore, if we were to express surprise mathematically with probability as p of x, surprise would be 1 over p of x. In actual information theory, the formula for surprise is log 1 over p of x. The reason for using log in this formula is part of information theory, which I won't go into detail here, but it was used as a method for efficiently transmitting information. So, to summarize, in information theory, information is a measure of surprise or unexpectedness expressed as an objective number. You can think of it as a degree of surprise. Many papers and other explanations use this format. Although the form may vary, the meaning is the same. Typically, surprise is a highly subjective and psychological phenomenon. In information theory, the term information is used instead of surprise to indicate a more objective indicator. However, for our purposes, whether it is called information or surprise, it's good to remember that it is inversely related to probability. Next, it's time to look at the expectation value. To understand the expectation value, let's consider the following soccer game. Fundamentally, the outcome of a soccer game is heavily influenced by the skill levels of the players. As you can see, the average skill level of Team ECFC is 8 points, and the average skill level of Team AIFC is 7 points. From an objective skill level standpoint, Team ECFC is considered stronger. However, it's not guaranteed that Team ECFC will always win, because players might have off days, or not be able to always perform at 100%. So, Let's express this individual condition as a probability. For example, a probability of 0 0.1 means that, on average, a player performs at their level about once in 10 games. Let's consider the condition probability like this. Then, when you multiply each player's skill level by the probability, you will see that the value for Team AIFC is higher. In this way, multiplying the objective skill level by the probability could be seen as the expected performance or predicted strength of each team on that day. 
This is the expected value, which considers both the objective data and the daily variables. So, why do we need this expected value? Let's assume we are sports gambler betting on sports games, where hundreds of millions of dollars are at stake in each match. Then you really need to think carefully about which team will win. Will you bet considering only the objective skill level? Will you consider the expected performance value in your betting? This can lead to a lot of deliberation. Of course, no one can guarantee the outcome of a match, but considering various data might allow you to make a more rational decision. Thus, the expected value formula can be simplified as follows. If we represent each player's skill level with a variable x and the probability as p of x, the long formula can be simplified, and this is the expected value formula you see in textbooks. Next, it's time to learn about entropy. If you have understood the meaning of the expected value, entropy will be really easy to understand. The entropy formula is, if you replace the x in the formula with the surprise value we looked at earlier, this becomes the entropy formula. When we think about the expected performance formula, in other words, the expected skill level value, if you attach the objective skill level x to the probability value p of x and calculate the expected skill level value, now you can attach the objective surprise value to the probability value p of x and calculate the expected degree of surprise. So, entropy is not something particularly difficult. You can think of it as the expected degree of surprise. But why is entropy necessary, and where is it used? There are many uses for entropy, but let's give one example. Just like before, let's assume a game between two teams. Let's assume the objective skill level of both teams is the same as you see, and coincidentally, the expected values or expected power of both teams are the same too. If the objective skill level and the expected values are the same, which team would you bet on? Of course, we can't guarantee which team will win, but another factor to consider in such cases is entropy. First, let's think about this player's probability of 0.9. A probability of 0.9 means this player is likely to consistently show his skill in 9 out of 10 games. On the other hand, a player with a probability of 0.1 means that 9 out of 10 games, he is consistently underperforming. In other words, a high probability of 0.9 or low of 0.1, consistently performing well or consistently performing poorly, indicates players who are predictable, regardless of skill. However, a probability of 0.5 means it's a 50-50 chance. That means the player might show his skill, or he might not. So this player is quite unpredictable, like flipping a coin with an equal chance of landing heads or tails, Predicting this player's performance in a standalone game would be quite uncertain. Therefore, if we compare the predictability of the two teams, Team Easy FC is definitely more predictable than Team AI FC. Although being more predictable does not necessarily mean a higher chance of winning, it can be an important data point in determining the outcome of the match. Entropy is used to calculate this type of predictability. We will use this formula to calculate the entropy of each team. As you might expect, the more predictable the team, the lower the entropy, and the less predictable the team, the higher the entropy. Remember, entropy tends to be high when unexpected events occur frequently. So, we've looked at these three things, and if you followed along, you should have a pretty good understanding of cross entropy by now. The cross entropy formula is just one change from the entropy formula. In the formula, you multiply the surprise of q of x with the probability of p of x. What does this change from p of x to q of x mean? In fact, we use the concept of cross entropy quite a bit in our daily lives. For example, when we order chicken from a delivery app, we open the app and look at the restaurant ratings. The ratings are essentially the average score people have given for the chicken. If it's 4.5 out of 5, it's very likely that people think the chicken is delicious. So, if you trust the high probability and order from a 4.5 rated place, but then you receive the food 
and it's not what you expected. In this case, when there's a difference between the restaurant rating and your actual experience, we feel discomfort. This is very similar to the concept of cross-entropy loss. If the correct answer is given and the output from the neural network is such, the neural network feels discomfort, much like we feel when there's a discrepancy between restaurant ratings and actual taste. Cross-entropy allows us to calculate the loss in this way, and by updating the neural network's weights in the direction of reducing this loss, if the neural network's output is updated and comes closer to the actual value, you will see a reduction in the cross-entropy loss. Lastly, I would like to talk about why cross-entropy is better than the MSE loss function. Of course, MSE is a good loss function, intuitive and easy to use. However, the reason why cross-entropy is better is because it shows the loss more effectively than MSE. The following diagram shows each of the loss functions. When the actual value, ground truth, is 1, if the predicted value is close to 1, the neural network has predicted well, and if the predicted value is close to 0, the neural network's predictive ability is considered poor. As the neural network's predictive ability decreases, the loss from cross-entropy is greater than from MSE, and not only that, the gradient of cross-entropy is much steeper, so the farther the predicted value is from the actual value, the more effectively cross-entropy can minimize the loss. This is an important advantage of cross-entropy. Today, we have taken some time to understand the concept of cross-entropy, which is one of the most commonly used loss functions in deep learning, and it's an essential part for training deep learning models and improving them. That's all for the cross-entropy loss video I prepared for today. I hope it helps in your deep learning studies. Thank you for watching today's video, and I wish you great success in your research and learning journey. Thank you.